Hello YouTube. It is uh, still Tuesday. Um, it is still Tuesday, July 12th, 2022. Um, 11:37 a.m. I'm trying to get out of the rob shop. This is a this is a tricky driveway to get out of. Just saying. At least I was able. Ooh, that guy got one smash. <laughs> yeah, this is this is kind of like the automotive shop district, so you do see a lot of stuff like that around here. Um, and this is also about a block away from the large Amazon facility. In fact, I think I'll drive by it just to share it with y'all. Um, for those that weren't watching my vlog back when I was trying to apply there, which was, I don't know, like five, six months ago, seven months ago. Um, once I get my bonus, which I think I'm only about two weeks away from, my, my signing bonus, um, I will have the option of uh, putting in for a transfer to another facility. And, and at that point, I do believe my, my pay and my, my uh, status, everything will stay the same. Um, and this is certainly one I'm considering going to. Although, I, I, I can't lie, I, GYR, GYR3 feels like home to me right now like I get a lot of friends in that building and I for somebody that's that's not management whatsoever um, I, I feel like I, I have a surprisingly large amount of clout in that building like the, the management from the you know top down most everybody knows me like all the all the upper people this is it right here on the right I don't even know what what one this is I wonder if it has a sign that says no, it just says Amazon I know Google Maps would say what the unit is. I'm sure it's I'm sure it's a PHX something. I know PHX six is the one where I did all my uh, application out at on uh, Buckeye Road. But uh, yeah, this now this isn't nearly as big as the one that I work at. But um, as y'all can see, this one is huge. Now, all this space on the right where you see these big prime trucks, the delivery vehicles. Now, that's, I know that's all handled by a subcontractor, uh, and that's actually who I was applying for before I wasn't actually directly applying to Amazon. Well, welcome candidates. Looks like they're doing some mass hiring here, judging from that welcome candidate sign. Wow, last time I came through here, this was not closed off like this. I guess they're trying to keep trucks on one side and employee vehicles on the other, like semi-trucks, docks on the, on the right there. Um, anyway, yeah, this is much smaller than what I work at, and I'm really not sure what exactly, I mean, this is obviously a fulfillment center because they're, they're uh, you know, they got the, the trucks here, but, but I know those trucks are, uh, hey, look, there's a big forklift. That is a completely different company. That guy's moving center blocks on this one. Big one. Big, big forklift. Not to be confused with the toy eye, toy eye drive. Um, I'm sitting down with the steering wheel. Um, but, uh, but yeah, certainly there's a, there's the option to maybe maybe transfer there. But but yeah, I, I really do. Like part of me really wants a shorter work commute. But. Uh, yeah, I sure do like, uh, I sure do like living, or I sure do like it over at GYR3, and, and like, like, I, I, I'm at the point, I pretty much, like, do what I want, no matter what department I was, I'm in, and, and I wasn't inbound again last night, uh, when I got there, did my thing of going over to, to, um, to Northside Outbound, to, to see if they need me to do totes, and she had commented that uh, that um, the, the, the woman who usually signs me on, whose name I can't remember. Gosh, she probably feel like felt like I was stalking her because I I I ended up like sitting by her at lunch. Just it just happened to sit over where I usually sit, and we ended up taking our lunch at the same time. And, and then I took my uh, my last break later than normal, and. And in the small break room, over near the end of inbound, 
and, and wouldn't you know it, she was in there too, like right by where I always sit down. So, but yeah, I, uh, and, and as always, like she was glad to see me, but she's like, you know, she goes, I'm, she goes, there's just, we don't really have nothing going on. She goes, I've, I've, I've already got more people than I need, and I'm probably just going to be VTOing everybody, and, which stands for voluntary time off for those not from there. Uh, you know, and just sending, sending people home. She goes, she goes, you may as well just, you may as well go to, go to, go to inbound because I know they'll put you to work. And I'm like, I'm like, okay, okay, well, see you tomorrow. <laughs> Didn't think I was going to see her at lunch and second break, but um, went over to inbound. They were very glad to see me. I kind of got an earful of, why weren't you here yesterday? We needed a driver yesterday. We needed somebody to do the pallets yesterday. Like we, we needed you yesterday. And you know, I did see. Like the the core group of the, the 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 lower level managers that are um, called the PAs or process assistants, and and one of them was given you know they were giving me a bit of flack about what you do you make me sad tell me you're at outbound you should be here helping us we need you and I'm like I'm like I love it over there though but I didn't realize until they were telling me today just how bad they were they just, they, just, they really really needed me. And then they had, they had uh, ended up having it. Uh, I'm not sure if they got the forklift driver that people sometimes call the mummy. Um, I don't know her name, but she instead of wearing like a normal COVID mask and and um, air air quotes on normal COVID mask, because to me that's just all fucking face muzzle nonsense anyway. But she tends to completely wrap her wrap her head like a mummy and then has glasses on so all you see is just wrapped up head and glasses it's uh it's kind of absurd but yeah she's 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 uh not very liked um much as just for, like her work is not she's like she's a nice person I've, I've actually rode the bus with her she's she's cool I'm, I'm cool with her I like her but she's as, as a forklift operator, she's um, kind of slow, <laughs> very slow, and and not not re really flexible as far as like kind of like when things are in a pinch, moving from one task to another task and realizing that hey, I should probably get on this truck because this one just we need this product now, or or I should maybe just. Close this, close this safety gate. Even though I, I don't have this buffer full because they need these totes now. Um, I don't. She just doesn't think like that. In fact, I know I got her upset at me the other day because the water spiders were telling me like I don't know why she won't close the back gate. The thing is, the thing is pretty much full of totes, but she won't close the back gate so we can open the front gate and get at them. Because I was just busting my ass trying to trying to keep up, but I just couldn't get ahead. And. And I had, it was like after 10, I still had to have my first break, which I normally do, you know, between 9 and 9.30, so, um, yeah, I just went over there, and she's like, hey, I'm not done with that, I'm not ready for that yet, and I'm like, everybody else is, <laughs> and I just closed the gate while she was on her, on her forklift, but I mean, she wasn't putting stuff in the gate anyway, she was pulling them out of the, uh, pulling them pulling double stacks out of the trailer and just stacking them up and, and buffering them up, not even down stacking them. So it's like, you know, you can do that with that gate closed. It doesn't need to be able for you to do that. You don't get any, you don't get any bonus points for completely filling that up to capacity um, before you close the gate. But, but you, you certainly inconvenient, you know, but, but, but you do get, you do get some, uh, fucking buddy points off of, off of other people working there. You have those totes there when they need them. Um, on that note, I didn't, I didn't see George from DCAM. So I'm thinking maybe she works back half, which is meaning, meaning she works from the schedule where she works from Wednesday through, Wednesday through Saturday night. I might not see her again until Wednesday. So I really, really hope I'm doing totes on Wednesday. It's pretty much a guarantee. The, the, the odds are pretty good I'll be doing totes on Wednesday. So I really hope I see her. And I, I, I have not, not been able to get her out of the line for sure. Um, although there was this other gal that I've, I've been noticing for months, but I've never worked alongside her as much as I did today. And I don't know her name. I need to find out her name. 
she's African. I know I don't mean black. I mean she's African. She's got got quite an accent. I have no idea where we're from. Um, come to find out, she's a college student. She's a law student. So. somebody that I can have some intensely amazing uh, conversations with if we ever were to end up hanging out outside of work. But as it was, she was, um, I was mostly, so, so I, I did end up going to inbound. I started working on pallets. There wasn't really much to do. And after about an hour-ish, I was completely caught up to the point where I was um, basically doing water spider work and, and going up and down the lines and, uh, um, and um, oh shit I should have went the other direction Grr. I guess it doesn't matter I'm on my way to the clinic by the way. Um, so I, I had my, my appointment with my rescheduled appointment with my therapist was yesterday and I completely thought I forgot about it and and the irony is when I when I went down to the justice court yesterday to see what my remedies are for getting Priscilla the hell out of my home. Um, um, that, uh, yeah, I did, I did, I did manage to finally call and get through to my case manager, and we had a pretty good talk. And she asked, you know, I've, I've, I've been seeing, seeing my therapist, and I'm like, well, actually, no, because she was sick, she was gone a long time, and then, she finally made it back and rescheduled my first appointment I missed because something went wrong with my car so I had no way to get there. Um, it, was, it was a no car disaster. I couldn't, because I was dealing with stuff in the car, I couldn't even really work around and make it happen with the, with the bus. And, and then I rescheduled and then she canceled because she was sick again and then said, and I told her, like, yeah, we've, uh, I know we've rescheduled, but I'm not sure what it was. So the irony is that it's like, it's like, oh yeah, that appointment's in four hours. Whoops. Anyway, I, I needed my sleep when I got home. So, you know, uh, what do I need more? Therapy or sleep? Eh, it's a crapshoot. But anyway, I'm headed there to try to reschedule that. I would imagine she's probably getting sick of rescheduling me, but... Modern life is difficult, and I want the schedule is difficult to, to, to work with. So. Um, anyway, so yeah, really, really cute African uh, problem solver. She versus problem solver, um, which which means basically she comes in and the pallets that I unload. Once I get the safety gate done, she's the first one that comes in, and she, I don't know exactly what they do, but basically they they they. Um, check all that all the cargo into the system you know into the computer system and you know they, they roll around with a with computer and you know, laptop computer on a cart and um and with it has a scanner and a special printer and stuff and print some labels as needed scan scan some barcodes and stuff as needed and, and then they typically mark mark the the pallets with uh, what what department it, it goes to and like what category of stuff it is, which which is a big deal to to the to the, to the, the water spiders, which is a, the position that I held for a long time. You know, when I go into a loading zone as a water spider, you know, I'm looking I'm looking at how the pallets are marked, and she would be one of the persons that would mark the pallets. So um, the pallets with with stuff on them, not to be confused with the empty pallets, which I'm working with a lot of the time. Um, Anyway, she, um, and I, I've kind of said hi to her before while she's working, and I've come in as a water spider, but I never had any kind of conversation with her, and I never had any real reason to have a conversation with her than ask her if, hey, are you, you going to mark all of these? Yes. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, and, and the view I get of her while walking with a pallet jack is not the same view as I get from being up above her in a, uh, in a, uh, in a, uh, in a forklift. And anyway, she's captivatingly gorgeous. Like, I mean, I, I've noticed that before, but not as much as I noticed it last night. And I just, it's, I think she ended up being the problem solver on every single zone that I loaded. Just as I would be loading, as I would be loading the back half, 
she would be loading the front half. Oh, and there was some kind of a weird issue with with the labels that I put on them. Because sometimes when I'm when I unload a unload a truck, um, they'll give me these these sheets that have information about it as far as like when it arrived, and there's a scannable barcode that that the problem user solvers use for something, and, and you know, be some information as far as like who shipped it and stuff like that. Um, and, um, and generally speaking, the, the guys doing TDR will will put put those you put those on the um, you put put those in like a little cup holder right outside the dock door. Yeah, my blinker's on. That means you need to let me over. Um, he'll put those by the dock door. That guy's in a hurry. Wow, there's a stoplight in oh that is brand new. There has never been a traffic light at that intersection. It's some giant big new cast building going in there, which makes me wonder what it is that used to be there, because I can't remember. Um anyway, um but anyway, one of the other forklift drivers, I was just doing my usual thing, I work on wooden pallets, and at that point I had I like wasn't even on the on the on the pit. I was just in the zone stacking the ones that I had brought brought up. And he comes in and he's like, hey, can I get you to unload? I forget the dock numbers. I want to say 148, 149. Generally speaking, each two adjacent dock numbers are in a little park zone. And, and generally, there'll be a pit driver assigned and work those two doors as a work zone as long as he's, you know, those, those trucks will keep. Generally, two trucks will keep one driver busy. Um, most of them have two loading zones. The one I was at also has an emergency exit, you know, pedestrian door. So, so there's uh, there's actually a third loading zone on that one, which is pretty neat. Um, anyway, he um, so he came up and he asked me if I wanted to do, you know, your, hey, hey, can you come come do these? And uh, if you can if you can start with, I need you to start with with uh, door 48, 48. I think I might be saying the wrong number, but it's but it's not that important. But anyway, there were two doors he wanted, you know, two trucks he wanted to meet me on that start specifically with one, and he hands me the papers for him. Oh wow, look at that window air conditioner in that uh, Honda Passport. That's that's awesome. Yeah, I got the feeling somebody lives in that. That is their mobile home. At least sometimes. That's that's. I'm not gonna lie. That's actually kind of neat. Um. <laughs> it looks obnoxious as fuck, but still kind of neat. I can't say I've ever seen a uh, window air conditioner in a Honda Passport before. Um, so anyway, he gave me... He gave me, uh, gave me the papers. So these are, these are for, for, for that, that, that truck. And I'm like, okay. Well, about the time I got the first half... Uh, the first half of the loading zone, because the loading zone's an end powder split into front halves and back halves. So you can fill up the front half, close the safety gate, and the problem solver can get in, and and potentially even even water spiders can get in and start moving that cargo while you're still filling the back half to keep the product moving. So, um, anyway, um, so as I'm working on loading the truck, the TR comes by and puts papers in the cup. And I'm like, I already got papers for this one. He's like, oh, I don't know. They just gave me gave me these papers to put on this dock. And I'm like, okay, cool, thanks. Well, when I finish the front half, I walk back to the door to grab the other papers. I just need, I want to check them. Make sure, you know, if they're identical, the ones I've already been given, then eh, I got extra copies, whatever. Um, but uh, yeah, they were completely different. <laughs> I'm like, wow. <laughs> So I got, I've been given two completely different information sheets to go on the pallets off this same truck. So one of these is right and one of these is wrong. So before I go, go put them on, you know, cause once I, once I, before I close the, close the gate, I'm supposed to mark them. So yeah, I don't think I closed the safety gate yet, but I'm, I'm still going, go in and mark them, then go out the, you know, back in and close the safety gate. So um, I walk over and I ask uh, one of the PAs, I don't know her name. She's only kind of recently transferred to, to inbound. I like her. She's she's pretty cool, but I don't I don't know her name. I'm not that personal with her yet. I mean, she definitely recognizes me as one of the you know more senior people in that crew that, that that works you know all over the place and stuff. So she's always really cool to me and stuff. Um, anyway, um, she she goes. Uh, I ask her like, hey, which which uh, 
he said, well, I was given these by the guy that the, the temporary lead uh, forklift driver that told me to work to empty that truck. And then uh, Alejandro put these in the cup and they're different. So do you know which one I should? Because I was hoping she could, she had a computer terminal. She had a problem. So she was actively working as a problem solver. She had a problem solver, uh, you know, thing. I thought maybe she could scan them both and figure out which actually went to that truck. And she just looks at that and looks at me and she's like, she's like, just gave me that look like, fuck this place. <laughs> not, not me, just kind of like, yeah, some type of, she goes, you know, she goes, just put one of each on it, every pallet. She goes, put one of each on it. Let the problem solver that works on it sort it out. And I'm like, I just laughed. I'm like, okay. Okay, that's fine. I don't know exactly. I've, I'm not trained as a problem solver. I don't know. I, like, I've kind of seen some of what they do, and I understand the basics of what they do. But I don't. I'm not trained in that. I'd like to be. I'd like to know how to do it, but um, I'm kind of on a different, different, you know, work path. Like probably the next thing I'll be trained to do is TDR, um, which is operating the the dock, the dock locks, uh, the air locks for the trucks. You know, not. Um, since problem solver is a step away from the from the uh, from the forklifts, and I've become really good at doing the forklifts, whereas. Um, well, just when I'm trying not to think about Priscilla and I'm not thinking about Priscilla, this comes on the radio. She told me the main reason she wants to learn to play bass is so she can play the bass line on this song. This song does have a fucking epic bass line. It's a shame these guys are a one-hit wonder. Space Hog. Um, this album, Resident Alien, it's not it's not a hundred percent good, but it's got some other good songs on it. I really felt this band showed promise, but I don't I don't know if they really did anything after this album. They certainly didn't have any other hits. Um, but of course I do have Resident Alien on CD, and I also have the CD single for uh, in the meantime, which not worth much money, but it's kind of kind of rare. Uh, Anyway, yeah, Priscilla says this, that's her goal is to learn how to play this bass line. I don't, I don't have a problem with her learning bass and stuff. I'm just kind of bothered with the circumstance of whom, uh, around which she has ob obtained this bass guitar. And uh, the fact that she's getting a bass guitar before she's getting her own apartment. As I stated before, the whole reason I haven't been buying her any gifts for the last four years is she doesn't have any place to put them as long as she's still in my apartment. I want her out of my apartment, like from the day she moved in there. I just, it's not that I didn't want to still be her boyfriend. I just don't, I'm not a fan of cohabitating. I need, I need my place to be my place. And I kind of like her place to her be her place where I go to get away from my place. But damn. That's not what I was trying to talk about. I was happy about just talking about Amazon until this came on. Uh, anyway, I do love this song, though. Um, so anyway, the, the absolutely gorgeous, um, just stunningly gorgeous. And, and now that I've had some conversations with her and realize, oh, my God, you're a law student. You're not only gorgeous, but you're freaking brilliant. And, 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 and never really noticed, like, what a beautiful voice she's got. She's got that going for her, too. And... You know, I, I don't feel like there was any kind of like flirty connection like what I had going on with uh, with with um, Georgia from D Camp. In fact, I, I feel like I'm probably in her mind uh, too old, and she probably feels that I'm way out of you know she's way out of my league, and 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 she is. But gosh, I sure enjoy looking um, and dreaming. But uh, anyway. Um, so yeah, for the first time, I actually had a good reason to talk to her, because um, I had I had gone through the the uh, just like the, the 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 PA had told me I I put one of each. It seems like this is a nuts like thing to do, but okay, put one of each on the uh, put. Uh, wow, she was cute. Uh, one of each on the um, one of each on each pallet, and let the problem solver figure it out. Well. As soon as I started loading the other, the, the back half of that zone, I noticed that she was the problem solver. So I, I, I hopped off my uh, forklift and walked over to her. And it was like, 
I figured I'd, I'd, I'd explain like why there was two on each one because that's certainly not how they're supposed to be. And and she kind of explained like what she was doing with them and that it was no big deal, you know, and stuff. But that's the first time like we'd ever had that much of a conversation. And and I forget what we started chatting about after that. I mean, it was obviously it was just you know it was work related. We weren't having a kind of personal conversation or anything above the above and beyond the fact that yeah. Sometimes it just gets stupid here, and this is kind of stupid. Um, but yeah, basically one of them had more information than the other one, and had like kind of a problem solver checklist on it. And she said, she goes, yeah, I'm not even scanning any of those. I'm pretty much just going through the, uh, she goes, I'm pretty much just scanning the barcodes on the product and labels on the product, and and, uh, and I'm just using this one because it's got the checklist on it. And I'm like, well, what are you doing with the other ones? She goes, oh, I'm just throwing them away. And I'm like, well, if you throw them away, why do I? Why would I even be putting them on there? And she goes, she goes, I don't know. Yeah, and it's like, yeah, why do we do a lot of stuff around here? Eh, I don't know. And of course, I'm going to keep doing it because that's what I'm supposed to do. But uh, anyway, we ended up having several other chats throughout the course of the day, and but just mostly just. <laughs> Every time I'm coming in and out of the back half of the zone, she's just right there in my headlights in the front half of the zone, just being being just way too gorgeous to be working in a warehouse. Anyway, I should wrap this up uh, since it's getting quite hot in here. I think it's 100 and I think the last time I heard the weather on KTR right before I started this video, it was 100. They said it was 106 out. High temperature for today is 111. There's a high heat advisory, blah, blah, blah. Air conditioning is working. Um, Rob said it was just a fuse, although he said I blew a 30 ounce fuse. He's like, what are you connecting that you ain't supposed to be connecting that's drawing a lot of power? I'm like, dude, I didn't have anything connected. So the only thing I've been using is, is, is that phone charger. It don't draw much power. I said, plus I use it on the lead that you connected that I think that you told me was hardwired to the battery and has its own fuse. It's like, oh yeah, yeah, that's a separate circuit. So that's the only thing I've been using in that car since I've had it back. He goes, oh. I said, and I wasn't using it when it stopped blowing cold right as I pulled in the parking lot yesterday evening. He goes, well, he goes, could be something's going wrong with your fan that's pulling too much, too much power. He goes, if, uh, if it pops again, we're gonna have to replace that, replace your fan. I'm like, okay, cool. So, um, so that's where I'm at with my air conditioner. I got, I got cool air now, but, but, yeah. Generally, if there's something popping a fuse, there's, there's something popping a fuse, and it's probably gonna do it again. So it's just a temporary fix, and I expect it to, and I expect it to go out again soon. Anyway, on that note, I am cooking myself in here. I'm sweating like crazy, so it is uh, so much cooler if I open the door. Anyway. On that note, I might be in here for a while. I should really put this up. I should put this up as soon as it stopped. Uh, I can stick up. Still don't have the. Uh, still have never found the uh, suction cup for the other side. And I lost lost that the day I bought it. Unpackaged it. Didn't realize there were suction cups that I had to put in myself, and one of them just. Probably under my seat. One of the seats. It's really hard to get under the seats in this Saturn. Anyway, um, thanks for coming with me on the drive. There will be more. I certainly have more to say about Priscilla. Um, but I can give you the super short version right now for you in this video. Um, we have not spoken one word to each other at all since... Uh, she made it back home on Monday morning. It's not good. I had a good long talk with Rob about her, and it's like, well, you know, you guys trying to work out your relationship? I said, you know, I kind of, I was kind of thinking about it Saturday afternoon. <laughs> we were naked on my bed. I said, but right now, nah. I'm surrounded by beautiful women in a warehouse all night long, and a lot of them check me out because the guy in the forklift looks pretty fucking cool. And uh, I'm, I think I'm just ready for a, for a, ready to trade in for a newer model with less miles on it. It's in better shape. And um, it doesn't have all the bad blood and bad baggage that Priscilla and I have today. Because, I mean, there's still, now, even if we work past this, I mean, you know, 
I'm, I'm always going to be, there's always going to be the bitterness for me about what, what happened during this time period. And I'm always still going to kind of resent that, that she, in, in my opinion, didn't provide me enough help during that eight month time period that I was a uh, pedestrian without a motor vehicle. Didn't kind of give me the, the help I needed and left me, I felt she kind of left me high and dry and made me go through a lot of unneeded suffering. And um, you know, there's, no matter how much we get things better, I'm not, there's always going to be that resentment there. It will always be there. I mean, I can say I let go of it, but I'm like, you know, I can forgive, but I can't forget. I don't, well, I'm kind of forget, but it'll, things will happen. It'll remind me of it. Could be a song on the radio. Could be a. Hey, bro. Yo. Hey, hey, brother. Would we have a bus to get a jump for me? Our car, the battery just died on us. We're just right here. Y'all could hear that. <laughs> I told him all of what I'm, I'm willing to give the guy a jump, but when I told him what's all involved in getting a jump from this car, he's like, "Don't worry about it." Oh well, hopefully find somebody else to help him out. It's, it's not under the hood. No, it's a Saturn Ion, dude. It's not under the hood. That reminds me of this one time. I was really wrapping this video up. That just reminded me of this really great story, and hopefully, I get it out super quick. Um, so. So when I was a teenager, uh, I had a side hustle of doing car stereo installations. And a lot of times people would, you know, I'd, I'd borrow people's cars for about three, four days. And, they, and one of the conditions was that, hey, I may need to run some errands, you know, cool if I use your car for the errands. And they'd be like, yeah, of course, you know, no problem. So, um, you know, obviously they don't want me doing a whole bunch of joyriding in their car, but you know, you need to, you know, whatever. Because at the time I didn't have a running vehicle. So, Anyway, um, so I'm putting a stereo in, in this uh, Volkswagen Bug, like a classic, I want to say early 70s Volkswagen Bug. This would have been, uh, I want to say like 88, 89, living in Doug, small town, Douglas, Wyoming. No, leave me the fuck alone, dude. I'm fucking in the mood for your shit. Why are you in the mood for your shit? Leave me alone. That guy sounds like such a tweaker. Um, anyway, um, so I'm borrowing this Bug while I'm putting the stereo in it. It was actually this girl that went to the high school, for this girl that I went to high school with, it was super cool, but was always a little, I don't know, she's one of the chicks that was like a popular chick and was always kind of stuck up to me. Um, like I never really, her name was Ramona, and I never really was, had much contact with her. Uh, other than, you know, I, we, we went, you know, we're in the same grade and in you know, the small town schools. I mean, of course I knew who she was, but she wasn't anybody that I really had anything to do with. However, Shortly after high school, I became really good friends with her mother because <laughs> her mother worked with me at the Holiday Inn. Mother, mother worked with me at the at, at the Holiday Inn, and her mother was cool as hell. Anyway, her mother bought her a car stereo and had me do the installation for it. So I was driving Ramona's car, and it was a early '70s bug, and I was having some issues with the car. It wasn't running very good. And, 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 and so I live in this small town, Douglas, Wyoming. Small towns are, small towns are different than cities. Um, there's just places where certain cliques hang out. And there was a corner uh, with just a vacant parking lot on it, a uh, corner of uh, 4th Street and Richards, Richards Street, that uh, was a kind of like the block between Richards and Irwin that, um, was generally called called Cowboy Corner, and that's where the uh, that's where the rednecks with the big trucks hung out. And those guys all worked on their own trucks. They're all mechanical. They're they're you know I'm I'm 
I was not a mechanic. I, I'm a little more mechanical now, but at the time, man, I was, I had no, no, yeah, I just wanted nothing to do with working on cars. I didn't know shit about working on cars. What little bit I, my stepdad had tried to teach me about learning, learning, learning to work on cars. I just, I resented helping, having to help him when he worked on his cars. I just, yeah, I wanted nothing to do with that. That's what mechanics are for. And, uh, so anyway, I'm driving, driving Ramona's car that I got from her mother because her mother's getting her for a, as a gift, putting a nice car stereo in it, and, which she bought for me, and, and I'm doing the install work. I did custom custom car stereo installations. did really nice car stereo installations in the late 80s in Douglas. Um, and mind you, there was really no car stereo shop in that small town, so I mean, I was kind of the guy for that, and I had a good reputation for that. Um, anyway, the bug is not running very well, and I'm rolling around with my roommate at the time, uh, best friend, um, who also worked at the Holiday Inn with me. Uh, I was a, I was a, well, according to my pay stub, I was a waitress, and um, he was a dishwasher, and uh, Ramona's mother was a uh, was a line cook. So, anyway, um, or was she a waitress? I don't remember. It was so long ago. I do remember Ramona's mother was just cool as fuck. It's just hard to believe somebody so unpretentious and cool that I worked with was the mother. Of a girl that I always kind of felt was sort of stuck up, you know, from through junior high and high school. It wasn't even like Ramona was that cute. I don't know why she just had that attitude, but anyway, God knows there were way cuter girls that I hung out with, with, with like all the time that were totally cool with me. But anyhow, um, she, uh, so we roll up to, we're, I'm having problems with it, and we roll up to, we roll up to Cowboy Corner because, yeah, those guys are mechanical. And anyway, I'm there with my, my roommate, and he's in the passenger seat, and I'm in the driver's seat, and and the one guy's like, yeah, I can look at it, I can probably, I can probably figure it out, it's true, it's no big deal. And he walks to the front of the car and says, pop the hood. I'm just like, uh, you know what, I'm, I'm good, don't worry about it. What do you mean? I said, you know, I don't know how to fix this car, but at least I know where the engine is. Dude, that's the trunk. 